Okay, well, it's great to be with you again. And I want to encourage you because we're coming up to a very exciting time of the year when we start the fall Alpha courses. And of course, this is a great time of year to be thinking about the people that God's brought into our lives, family members, neighbors, work colleagues, and to think about how we can best invite them to the Alpha introductory dinner. So many people from surveys say that if they were invited, they would come to church. And so I want to encourage you to be thinking about how you can mobilize other folks in your church to be inviting. Just imagine if 50% of the members of your church brought one person to your next Alpha course, how many people you would have. And it just takes a few invitations. So I really encourage you to be thinking about those people and to encourage people to be bold in doing that. Typically what we find is 80 to 90% of people who come to that dinner will then go on and do, do Alpha. So it's just inviting them, that one invite, come to the introductory dinner, hear some great stories, hear what Alpha's about. There's many ways to promote your Alpha course locally. Uh, yard sides we have, we have uh, magnets to go on the back of cars. And I hope your church is involved with the Alpha invitation locally. Last year there were 50 different groups of churches around the country in cities and counties who prayed together and worked together and did local advertising to win their city for Jesus Christ. So go online, you can find where there's a local invitation going on. There's, there'll be signs on, on billboards, on the interstate, maybe on bus tails and other places like that. This is all leading to the big vision where we want to encourage between 2014 and 2016 more and more churches. We want thousands of churches, in fact, to join in this. And really what we're encouraging is that they will be thinking much more often about the people that God has brought into their lives, family members, work colleagues, neighbours, and that God has planted us specifically. It's no coincidence which family we're in or which neighbourhood we're living in or which workplace we're in. There's no coincidence for that. And so as we start thinking about that, how does God want me to be? And of course, we see the model in Jesus. He was a friend of sinners and he spent time with them. He built relationship with them. And he then showed his disciples to do the same thing. And we're praying, planning that through over those three years, there'll be 60 million invitations going out from Christ followers. And out of that, we pray that one in five will respond so that 12 million people hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in that time period. Well, in closing, let me just encourage you, if I may, with the two verses the Lord's been putting on my heart just the last few days. It's all to do with trusting God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will make your path straight. What does trust look like? Well, I think part of it is leaning your whole being into that person. And in this case, it's into Jesus, trusting him. He's in control. He knows what's coming next. He knows where we are. He knows what we need to get through the challenges of life with his grace to be the head and not the tail. So wherever you are, maybe you're on the mountaintop. Well, that's great. Maybe you're in the valley. Not so easy in the valley. I encourage you to trust God and lean fully into him looking to him, knowing that he's in control, knowing that he loves you so much and that he is watching for you and for your best interests. So bless you and thank you so much. 